Hello everyone. How are you doing? So today we are going to build one very interesting part of our backend series of our e-commerce tutorials. We are going to build the shopping cart. So today we will build the backend of the shopping cart. As you can see in the screen, we have the shopping cart here for us. Let's try to add. So let's see a demo of this shopping cart. We already have three things in the cart. So let's add one more item in the cart. So let's go to the this Moto G add to cart. All right, and now let's click the show cart. And yeah, you can see the new product is in the shopping cart. And we can also remove the item from the cart. Let's try to remove the item from the cart. And now we only see the three items in the cart. Which is amazing, right? So let's see the API, how to build that thing. So as you can see that we have hosted our backend API, which is made using Java and Spring Boot in Heroku. And our front end is based, based on Vue.js and we have hosted that in, in Netlify. So let's see how is the API looks like when we add the item in the cart. So let's go to the network tab and let's add a product in the cart first. So let's add this dumbbell in the cart. So when you click the add to cart button, we see that we first we call this API, which is cart add and you pass the token here. And the request body will be just a quantity and a product ID and we pass the token for the user. So from this token, we retrieve the user ID and we save the user ID the product ID and the quantity in database. So in the API, let's see how it looks like. So we have a cart controller and we have a post method to add in the cart. So here we pass the token, the product ID and the quantity. This ID is optional. We don't need to pass the ID. As you can see, we're just passing the product ID and the quantity that's enough so we'll build this API of the post and let's see the API to get all the items in the cart so if you go to the cart page we see that we have the cart API cart and you pass the token and you get a response of the cut items. So let's open it. In a new tab. As you can see, we have cut items, which has ID, quantity, and a product object in the cart. So for example, we have, we see that we have 440 quantity is one and product is dumbbell and we can see the product here, dumbbell. Then the second item is the Moto G and you can see it in the second item object in the response that we have quantity and the Moto G. Then you have wash me and then you have smartphone. And then you have a total cost eight to nine four. So we have the 
wash me and the moto g and we have the roll cost and we need to format this it doesn't look good we should format it into a two decibel maybe i'll do it in the next tutorial so this is the get item and we have one more api for deleting the item from the cart so let's do implement that so let's, so let's see it in action oh so we are refreshing the page so we cannot see it for now but we can see it from the api so we're just passing the user token and we are passing one cut item id which you can see from here like you just you just need to pass this uh, this item so let's for example if we delete the id for 452 so let's try to delete it from the api so we have 542 so let's put 542 and let's also pass the token the token is this you can also find the token from the application and local storage and you can find the token here both are okay so let's pass the token in the api and let's execute this api and we got that item has been removed and we got a success true and now if you refresh the cart we should see the item should be deleted as you can see that item has been deleted 542 and if you also refresh this page here we will also see that that this item has been removed from the cart amazing huh and we got updated total price all right so today we are going to implement the backend i will implement just get post and delete i will like remove i will not implement the update one it's fine you can implement it yourself if you want so i hope it's clear what we are going to build today and you can see the previous videos in this playlist so previously we have implemented the wish list so the cart will be almost same as the wish list so i have created this lucid chart for you guys to understand it better so we have the wish list and we will build this cart one today So to build the cart, what do we need to have? We need to have the product ID, we need to have the user ID, we need to have the quantity, and we need to have a created date by which we can sort the cart items. So we'll have these four fields in this cart model that we will build today. So as you can see, we'll build first. We'll build the post API, and then we'll build the get, and we'll build the delete API. These three APIs, step by step. So I hope you guys are excited to build this cart feature. Let's get started. And you can see all the other videos from the from this playlist. Uh, all right. So. So the starting point will be the wish list and from this branch I will check out a new branch and I will push my code into this branch so it will be cart. All right so First, we will create the essential files uh, for the backend. So, first, we will build a controller. 
कंट्रोल एम जाबा क्लास and it will be start controller all right so let's annotate it with the rest controller and let's give a request mapping it will be start all right so now we'll create one service then we'll create a model and we'll create a repository so let's create a service it will be cart service and we'll annotate it with service and then we'll create a model it will be cut and it will have entity and it will have a table name will be cut so let's first finish the model it will be first it will have an id field which will be generated value and strategy will be generation type identity private integer id then we will have a column so let's once again check out the receipt chart We'll have an ID field, product ID, user ID, created date, and quantity. These five fields. So it will be name will be created date. And then we'll have a field minute one it will be join column will be we join by the product ID field the so name will be product id and it will be private product product and then we will have user field many to one join column name will be user id and it will be private user user what else and now we need
quantity. Private int quantity all right that's it let's create the constructor let's first create a empty constructor and let's then create all the getter and setter cool now we'll create a repository so it will be interface and we'll have, it will be it will be cut repository and it will extend jpa repository and cut and integer all right so for in the cut controller we will create three api we will first auto wide the service And we'll first create post cart API, then get all cart items for a user, and then delete a cart item for a user. So we'll have these three APIs, we'll create it one by one. So first we'll create the add to cart API. So it will be public. Response entity API response add to cart. And let's create a request body for the adding item in the cart, which will be, as you can see, it will be this object, which will have ID, product ID, and quantity. It will be add to cart DTO. So let's create this add to cart DTO. So let's go to the DTO. Let's create a folder here, package cart, and let's create a class here, add to cart, DTO. So it will have the three fields, which will be, as you can see, ID, product ID, and quantity. <coughs> so let's type it, private integer ID, private integer product ID, and private 
integer quantity so we can have id as nullable but product id and quantity should not be nullable so we can add a annotation not null not null all right so let's create the getter and setter for this constructor all right so we'll pass this request body Add to card video. And we'll pass a request the authentication token to check which for which user we are adding the cart item. So let's pass it request parameter. and it's token it will be string token so like we did for the wishlist controller we'll also first authenticate the token find the user we will do the same thing here for the cart and we need to also auto wide the authentication service for the same for authenticating all right so we have authenticated the user and find the user we found the user Now let's add it in the cart. So cart service. Dot. Add to cart. Let's pass the add to cart ATO. And let's also get the product. So product product will be so let's also auto wide the product ETO So we'll get product service dot. So if we can create a method, or I think it's better to do it in the card service. So let's uh, let's not do it here. Just add to card DTO and then pass the user. And we'll do it in the add to cart. And then we just return one new response entity. New API response. True and added to cart one will send a response message and we'll send a status HTTP 
ओके ऑल राइट इट विल बी क्रिएटेड नॉट ओके इट विल बी क्रिएटेड बिकॉज इट्स लाइक टू जीरो वन सो पेस्ट फर्स्ट रिक्वेस्ट सो नाउ लेट्स क्रिएट दिस मेथड एड टू कार्ट इन द कार्ड सर्विस so first we need to validate if the product id is valid and then we will save the cart and so okay so how to check the product is valid or not so let's create a method in the product service we sort of why it here and product service and let's create one method in the product service let's create a method find by id and pass add to cart dto dot get product id and it will validate if the product is valid or not so it will let's create this method and it will be product and we will call the product repository dot find by id product id and it will be optional product so if let's call it as optional product so if optional product is empty then we will throw an exception throw new product not exist exception and let's call it product is invalid and we'll see it in action soon and let's pass the product id here all right so let's create this class and it will be part of exception folder as you can see we have created this exception and it will be extends illegal argument exception and it's just super message and registered this we need to register this exception in the exception controller advice so let's register it exception
handler value will be exception handler so you know product not exist exception dot class public final response entity string handle product not exist exception exception you just now copy and paste it bad request all right so product service and it throws product context system and we need to now return the optional product dot get So it will be product so let's first test it before we save the item let's uh, first test the exception and see how it works so let's refresh the page And uh, let's go to localhost 8080 and then go to swagger.ui. So we see the we don't see the cart controller yet. What's happening? Okay, we have to also make a post mapping. And you have to make it a add. Okay, so let's refresh the page again. Now refresh it again. And we see that we have the cut controller and we have to see the new API. So here we let's get a token. We first get the token. Sign in. Admin at the rate of gmail.com. And it will be admin. So let's execute it. Get the token. and pass the token here and let's pass we don't need to pass the id here it's fine because it's optional so for now let's just pass the quantity let's make it one and let's make some corporate id some like absurd number which is not present and let's see if we get the exception or not so we got the exception that product id is not valid So our validation is our validation is working and if you send a product ID which is valid then we should not see uh, the exception. So let's first get all the products and let's pass the valid product ID and see that we don't have the error. So 3 is a valid product ID. So if you pass 3 here. 
no we have to do it here in a local uh, thing local swagger so here let's pass the let's get all the products and let's pass it here and we see this one so let's pass one here and then we should not see the error because this one is uh, present in the database so we see success so now we just need to save the quantity and the user right so we got the product we got the user we got the quantity so let's go make cart will be cart new cart let's make the model and now let's set the objects cart dot set product product cart dot set user set the user here and set cart dot set quantity and set the quantity here at the cart detail dot get quantity and cart dot set created date and new date that's it and now let's call the cart repository here so let's also auto while the cart repository and save it cart repository dot save and save the cart all right so let, let's now see it in action first let's refresh the rerun the, rerun the code and let's see if we can if we can see the new product added in our database or not so let's open a terminal and open the mysql terminal Open the MySQL I just pass root and root and now use e-commerce v2 all right now show tables so you see we have a card table here now show create table cart as you can see we have id created date quantity product id and user id these three things so now let's try to see we don't should not have anything in the cart right now so now it is empty now let's add a product in the cart and Let's try to add it and see if we have it or not. So let's put the quantity as three and pass the token. So let's execute it and we got a response true. And let's see if in the cart we see the new item or not. So as you can see, we have a quantity three, product ID one, user ID two. So it's saved in the cart. 3 and 1 and 2 so it's working so now we we'll just get all the items from the cart for a, for a user so let's build the second api now
so it will be a get mapping and public response entity and now we'll create one more DTO it will be a card DTO let's see what's what we're getting in the card DTO we are getting sending the ID quantity and product so we'll make this DTO and send it to the user so in the response entity we'll make the object it will be a card video so it will have as you can see it will have a list of card items and a total cost so we have to create two objects so one will be list of card item video which will be card items and we'll create this object card item video and it will have id quantity and product so it will have private integer id private integer quantity and private product product you can also use product DTO here which will which makes more sense but uh, I'm not using it because it might break the front end so for now I will use the product but ideally I should make it product DTO and use the and also change the front end so i will not do it right now but maybe in other tutorial i will factor the both front end and the back end so ideally you should use the cart dto items in the res response and request not the model like we are using it here but let's go it for let's uh, do it like this for now and maybe we'll change it later it's okay for now Cut in video and let's make getter and setter for all the items. And now we have the card video and let's import the list. And we'll have a total price private double total cost. And let's create a constructor also for here. And let's make the current setter. All right, let's also make it private. All right, so our DQ is ready. So send cart video. And it will be get cart items and we'll just pass the token here
and here we do the same thing authenticate the token you get the user there should be a better way to do it in in spring boot so we can just use some annotation in the here like pre authorize or post authorize something like that i haven't uh, implemented that yet but in maybe in the next tutorial in the next series of tutorial i will make it more secure the authentication part i will rewrite the authentication part and make it more robust but for now it's fine let's go ahead and create the finish the cart item thing so let's make send return new api response get cart items so cart card detail card detail it will be card service dot list card items and let's pass the user here and we'll pass this card detail here and http status will be Okay. It will be response entity. All right. So let's create this method. In the card service. So in the card DTO, in the card repository, we have to make a method find all by user, order by created date, and descending. So let's create this method in the card repository. So it will be, so let's make a list of card. And it will be find all by user order by created date and descending. and we will pass the user that's it so first we will get the card items and pass the user so now we have all the cart items ordered by the ascending date let's call it cart list
कार्ट लिस्ट एंड विल हैव वन सो फ्रॉम द कार्ट लिस्ट वी हैव टू चेंज इट इनटू ए कार्ट डीटीओ सो हाउ वी कैन डू इट सो विल डू इट लाइक लिस्ट ऑफ कार्ट item video will be cart items will be a new arrow list and now for cart in for cart cart we are iterating in the list and for each cart we have We are making the cut item DTO. So cut item DTO, cut item DTO will be. So you have to change the cut into cut DTO. So how we can do that? We go to the cut item DTO, and here we'll create a method. public we get a constructor here it will be not cut it will be cut cut so this id will be Dot id this dot quantity will be cut dot get quantity and this dot set product will be cut dot get product you can also make it dto it's fine all right so that's it so in the cart service now i will just call new cart item dto and the pi just pass the cart and i'll add the items in the cart items add the dto All right. Now we'll just also get the total price. So let's get the total price. Double. Total cost will be zero. and we'll just add it so total cost will be quantity into price so total cost will be card item btio dot get quantity into card item btio dot get so it should be actually cut dot get product dot get price and we'll add it in the total cost now we'll make it cart did you the final object that we are going to pass so let's we'll make it here new cart dto and cart dto dot set total cost will be total cost 
and card detail dot set card items will be the card items and we just return the card detail that's it i think that's enough to get the card cards so let's see if we can get it or not all right so we have started it and let's refresh the page and we should see the two apis yes we have seen two apis so now again get the token dot com and admin let's get the token after signing and let's get it from the cart and execute it and we got our response so let's open it in a new tab so we found that we have total cost we have id quantity and product so let's one more product in the cart and let's see if we can see it in the get item so let's add one more item in the cart let's pass the token and this one's product id 1 let's pass product id 2 and quantity may be 10 or 12 id doesn't matter id so let's execute it we got success so let's see if we can get it here yeah so we got one more item which has product id 2 we got the quantity 12 and as you can see that this list is sorted by the created date and the product that we have added latest is on the top so it seems to be working fine so we have one more api that is the delete i recommend you to do it yourself as an assignment just try it yourself pause the video try it and then you can check the solution that i'm going to build all right so i hope you have implemented it by yourself and now you can check my solution so it will be a delete mapping and it will be a delete and it will have the cart item id and it will have a response entity public response entity and it will have API response delete card item and it will also take the path variable and i'll also pass the request parameter here so let's once go to the ui and check how it is happening so let's go to the network tab and clear all the request here and now delete one item from the cart 
So we see, oh, we are refreshing the page, so we cannot see it here, but we can see it from here, the production API. I will pass the current MID and the token and execute it. So that's the, these are the two things. So we'll pass the card. So you can see we are passing the card item ID. I will be integer card item ID. Item ID and we will pass the request parameter like in other APIs. We will just pass the pass it here. Let's copy and paste it. I'm getting a bit tired. All right. So as usual, we are will authenticate the token, get the user. And now card service dot delete card item and pass the item ID here and pass the user here and then let's say send a response like this that it has been deleted. It will be okay and we can have a message that item has been removed all right so let's implement this uh, method so here we need to check the item id belongs to user because we don't want someone else to delete someone's sales card only user should be able to delete his own card item right so we need to have the check which is very essential in this case so let's do it so first we will get the card item so let's make it optional Card. So first let's check if the card item is valid or it is not valid, right? So let's check it optional card. Let's import it. Card repository. Find by ID. Card item. ID. Let's make it card item ID to be more clear. So if optional card is empty, just throw an exception. Let's send just a custom exception that card item ID is invalid. Let's make it a new. Okay. Now we'll get the cut. So cut cut will be optional cut dot get. And now if the cut doesn't belong to the user, then we'll send a error response. So if cut dot 
get user is not equal to the user then we will send one more exception that cart item does not belong to user card item id and else we we'll just delete the card so card repository dot delete and card that's it so let's try to implement that So let's get one more token. Select star from tokens. So we have this user ID three. We can use this token to add one more item and try to delete it from someone else's card and see that it is not working. So let's now refresh the. So let's add one more item in someone else's card. So let's make it quantity 2, product ID 3, let's execute it and we got the, we got some card items. So let's see from, in, from the card. So we have user ID 2. Uh, which which has the cut ID 13 so let's try to delete 11 number 11 ID cut from this by this user's token and see that our it is showing some error so let's try to delete from someone else's card and see the exception okay so let's let's first try to delete one item in the card that is just that doesn't exist at all so for example if we try 19 we should see some error that the card item doesn't exist so let's send this token and execute it so we got this response that card item is invalid and now let's try to delete item I cart item 11 id from by using this user id 3's token and see the response so let's try to delete 11 and we got the response that card item does not belong to the user 11 and let's, let's now try to delete ID number 13 which belong to the user ID and see so let's de delete 13 and we'll see that now it is deleted and we can also see from the from the database that this has been deleted so now delete one more item uh, 11 by the by this token of user ID 2 so let's try to delete 11 by the user ID token of 2. Now we see that he has now two items in the cart and we are trying to delete the item num cart item ID 11. So let's delete it and we got a success message and if we refresh it we should see only one item in the cart. As you can see, we have only one item in the cart. So that's it. And we can see that our total cost is also has been updated. So that's it for the today's tutorial.
so we have to summarize we have created three api for the cart get all items in the cart post item in the cart and delete a cart item in the next tutorial we are going to build the ui for the cart items you can see this cart items here the page you can see also the uh, I can hear how many items are present in the cart and then after that you will create the checkout thing using stripe so it's going to be quite interesting I hope you guys enjoyed the video if you like it then please uh, leave some comment or so send me a like option in the YouTube I'm so bad at asking for subscriber and asking for likes. But anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Stay tuned. Bye for now.